Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Dulcie Strawn, the interim dean of the J School. Thanks for being here today for our opening convocation. A special welcome to our new students and a welcome back to our returning students. I hope this morning, th this morning this will serve as an orientation to help you prepare for the coming academic year with information on classes, registration, scholarships, career services, networking, international experiences, and so on. Many of our faculty and staff are here. Faculty and staff, would you mind standing just for a second so everybody can see you? There we go. <laughs> Thank you all. Get to know these folks. They are the best faculty and staff you'll find at any J school anywhere. They're amazing resources for you. I believe most of them will stop by the reception after this and they'll be in their offices up until about 1 p.m. today. Go have a chat with them if you have time. There really are so many great people, resources, and opportunities for you here, and I want you to be able to take advantage of them. I think you'll be glad you did. The best way to make sure you're not missing anything is to follow us on Twitter. Also, like us on Facebook and use the school's website, website jomc.unc.edu, when you're looking for general information, news and events, and contacts within the school. You can also access our Twitter and Facebook accounts there. So please do that today if you haven't already. Those addresses are all up on the screen, I believe, there. On the other screen is a QR code that will take you to our convocation webpage where you'll find links out to much of the information covered today and important contacts within the school. We'll also be putting up video from today's talks as a reference you can return to throughout the year. As a J School major, you'll also receive a JOMC News e-newsletter in your email every Monday morning while classes are in session. If you aren't getting it and you want to get it, email JOMC underscore news at unc.edu. This is a great school. I think it's the best journalism communication school in the country, and I'm not alone. The last time an accrediting team of professors from other schools visited us, they reported that we had earned our reputation as a premier program in journalism and mass communication. Another measure of the school's excellence is how we stack up with our peer institutions, the other top journalism and communication schools in the country. I'm proud to point out that we are the back-to-back -back reigning national champions in collegiate journalism. We finished first overall the last two years in the Hearst Journalism Awards, often called the Pulitzers of Collegiate Journalism. We're defending that championship this year, and you have a role to play. Enter your work in the monthly Hearst competitions within the school. You can win recognition for your good work, and you can win money. You'll hear more about it from your professors, and you'll see notices about it in the JOMC News. Our advertising and public relations students are winning regional and national awards for their good work as well. They also play a major role in the university's goal to increase student participation in service learning through, through the courses that they take here in the J School. There are many, many great things going on at the school. Look around, ask questions, and get involved. Now I'd like to give you just a quick overview of our curriculum, which takes into account the rapid changes in the media industry, including the move toward increased use of a, of a wider variety of channels to communicate. Our curriculum has two major goals. One is to enable you to understand the roles of media in society and media's social, economic, and political impacts locally, nationally, and globally. The other is to enable you to conceptualize and produce news and information. The school's core courses remain the same. They are news writing, professional problems and ethics, and introduction to mass communication law. These three courses are the foundation for the curriculum. All of you will take those. 
From there, the curriculum branches out to a journalism track and an advertising public relations track. Within those tracks, there are several specializations. We have editing and graphic design, electronic communication, which we called in the old days radio and television broadcasting, multimedia, photojournalism, reporting, advertising, public relations, strategic communication, and business journalism. Uh, read on the website about our new uh, BA in business journalism too. That is a joint uh, program and degree with the School of Business here at, uh, at Carolina. Within those specializations, you'll go further into what we call immersions. The point is you can tailor your education here to develop the knowledge and skills that you want. The bottom line for me is that every student who graduates from this school can write with professionalism and accuracy, can understand the media environment in which we live and work, and know how to communicate effectively with a given audience. We hope to instill you with an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit and the confidence to truly shape the future of journalism and communication. Thanks again for being here, and I'd like to ask the school's Director of Student Services, Sharon Jones, to let you know about advising, course registration, graduation requirements, and so on. Hi, I'm Sharon Jones, Director of Student Records and Assessment. We're located in 154 Carroll, um, if you have any problems or questions concerning your academic progress, we are there for you. Graduation questions, registration, drop ad, whatever it is that you need to help you to get through the next two years of your education here at Carolina. Please feel free to drop by anytime between 8 and 5, Monday through Friday. It is walk-in only. We do not take appointments because we want you to know that we are here for you and we are not limiting you to the time that you spend with us to get what you need done. I also want you to know that um, if you have any other concerns that are not with academics but you don't know where to go to get your resources, hopefully we will be available to give you that information so that you can make sure that everything is done in a great, for you to have a great successful two years left with your requirements. Also, I want you to know that some of you that might be coming in as transfers, sophomore transfers, uh, some of you might not have the 2.9 overall GPA that is required to enter into the school. Uh, please feel free to come by and we will talk to you about that. We do not make exceptions to the 2.9 prerequisite to get into the school, but we will help you come to that um, 2.9 agreement if it's not done during the first semester of your sophomore year. At the end of your sophomore year, of your second semester, you still will be able to get that 2.9 and we can still take you in. So again, we're located in 154 Carroll and we have three different offices. I have two assistants and myself. So please drop by and see us at any time. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, I'm Ann Johnston and I am the director of the honors program in the J School. Uh, if you are interested in graduating with honors from the J School, we have a couple of requirements. First of all, at the end of your junior year, you have to have a 3.5 overall GPA. Um, second, you have to be interested in a topic that you want to spend an entire year investigating, living with, writing about, researching, and presenting. Um, and you do that by taking, during your senior year, you'll take two courses in the J School, uh, a course in the fall, the first honors course where you will actually write your proposal. You'll be um, doing a literature review of your research and then writing a, a proposal. And then in your spring semester of your senior year, you'll actually be carrying out the research 
writing up that research and presenting that research to your committee. Any topic on media and communication is welcome. If you have questions about the honors program or you want to just talk with me about some of your ideas, feel free to come see me up on the third floor of Carroll 361. Thank you. Good morning. I'm John Clark, uh, executive producer for the Reese Feltz Digital News Project. Reese News, ReeseNews.org, is our digital publication, and it's totally run by the students here at UNC. We tell stories for all digital platforms, the web, mobile devices, tablets, uh, social media, anything you can think of that's new or even emerging. Our purpose, our mission, our job, <clears throat> excuse me, is to innovate, it's to test, it's really to experiment with how we tell our stories on these digital platforms. We work with digital storytelling and we work with audience research. We want to know how people interact with us. We want to know what our users do when they come to our site, when they come to our mobile uh, applications, when they interact with us on social media. We're a newsroom and a laboratory. We're a newsroom in that we consistently produce timely, relevant, high quality content and news just like any other news organization. We're a laboratory in that we experiment with how we do that. And we work with our audience and we work with usage patterns to see what are people doing when they consume our content. And we report that back out to the students, to the school, and to the industry. We're located on the ground floor. Room 11 is our newsroom. Uh, my office is just down the hall in room 19 and 20. I encourage you to come by. We do have some positions available for staff. Uh, we still have positions in news, in marketing, in technology, programming, and design. Uh, you can come and join us. We also have a freelance uh, program that we work with where you can join us on a more limited basis. You can come, uh, get your feet wet, uh, see how it is to interact with us, uh, and produce some content that we, again, can get some data out of. Uh, we'll be down there there all afternoon uh, and I'm pretty much down there all the time uh, but come by uh, speak to us uh, there's some students in there that are working in the newsroom and we'll give you a, a feel for what it's like thanks Stephanie Brown, I'm the director of the Park Library here at the school. Um, so we have our own library and I live in the, in the J School and support you guys. Um, and what I wanted to tell you is the top five things that you need to know about the Park Library and that's also on our website. Down at the bottom, down here. Um, and you can get to our website, it's parklibrary.jomc.unc.edu, or you can go to the JOMC homepage and get it from there. So the top five things you need to know about the Park Library, number five. All are welcome to study here, undergrads, grad students, majors, non-majors, faculty. We've even had some people from Duke in the library. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, we have Macs and PCs and wireless, so you can check your email, Facebook, whatever you want during class. We don't judge, we don't care. As long as it's legal, it's okay with us. Um, we can save you time and help you find more stuff for your class project and paper. And by, when I say we, I mean me and also the Park Library Assistant, um, Megan Garrett. So um, we can help you do all kinds of things once you get to the point where you need um, more than Google. We can help you do more than Google. Uh, you can ask us questions about a class or a project or a paper or really anything uh, in a lot of ways. You can chat with us here. That's our little chat function. That's also our name, our, our screen name on AOL, uh, Google Talk, Twitter, JOMC, Park Lib, and all of those will help you uh, get more information and stay connected with us. And you can also make an appointment. We do take appointments. 
but we also take drop-ins, so either way. Um, and the number one tip that you should know about the Park Library is if we've got it, you can have it, which means, or you can borrow it anyway. Um, we have 10,000 books, DVDs, and more, and the UNC Library has about six million items, um, and you can borrow them from there. You can also borrow them from there and have them delivered to the Park Library. Um, and just a little bonus, you can eat and drink in the library, just be neat. So thank you. So uh, I'm David Alexander, I'm the school's IT director. Um, some of the things I want to talk about just I know a lot of you have technological questions and what I want to answer is kind of what we're here to do and what other resources you have on campus. So, specifically, most of you can solve your IT questions through the campus help desk or the IT response center. Uh, you can call 962-HELP, they're 24 hours a day. So any kind of questions about your computer or problems with your email or things like that, you can call them and they can help you sort it out. They also have on their website, the help.unc.edu, um, lots of frequently asked questions and things of that nature that you, know, you may be able to get a quick answer without having to uh, wait on the phone or anything like, like that. Um, for what we're here to do, uh, we're kind of designed to focus on what's in the J School. So we run all the labs. Uh, we've got about a dozen labs of Macs and PCs uh, that we support. We support all the computers in the building, and we support things that are specific to the J School. Uh, we've got a couple servers, web servers, file servers, things of that nature uh, that the IT Response Center is not going to be able to help you with because they don't run them. Um, so for those kinds of things, feel free to talk to us. You can either call us at that 9620527 number, um, but the best way is to send an email to that help at help.jmc email address, and that will send a note to all of my staff, and we can kind of work through it that way so you don't have to figure out who's in the office or who's doing what. Uh, it's kind of an easy way for us to solve your problems. So that's kind of the breakdown. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. We are in the basement. Um, 039, 040, Carroll Hall. So thanks a lot. I'm Napoleon Byers, the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies. One of the duties I have here at the school is the Chair of the Scholarship Committee, and that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Uh, one of the great things about this school is that media organizations, mass communication organizations, PR advertising, the full scope, give back to the school generously in addition to alums to the tune of uh, $250,000 a year. So over a quarter of a million dollars a, uh, of money and scholarships are given out each year by the school. There's a couple of things you have to do to be eligible for a scholarship. One is you need to be a scholar, you know, so it helps to go to class. So that's the first thing, you know. You do have to have a GPA to qualify for these scholarships. The other thing is uh, you have to fill out the application form. And you have to submit that form before the 1st of February each year, 1 February 2012. I know my email box will explode the day before, but you have to get these things in before the deadline. If you can do those two things, go to our scholarship page on our website, jmc.edu, go to current students, you'll see the scholarship uh, 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 section, just click on that, and it's chapter and verse. But there are a lot of special needs out there in the audience. There, I'm sure there are families out there that are facing homes that may be, that may be uh, repossessed or a parent has lost a job or you have a sibling that's facing college next year. And the thing we want to do is we want to be able to help you, but you have to help us first. So go and do the scholarship thing, fill out the form, and email me at least by January 31st, and we'll rock this thing next year. So thanks so much. Hi, my name is Jay Hubank, and I'm the Director of Career Services for the Journalism School. 
So there are three things I want you to leave here today uh, thinking about in terms of what I can help you with. The first and foremost thing is how important internships and real world experience is in terms of you getting a job when you graduate. Everybody's gonna be happy that you have a BA from here. I'm gonna be excited, the deans are gonna be excited, but you have to be able to show employers that you can do the work that they're asking you to do. So how do you do that? You get internships, you look on campus for experience. So after the uh, convocation, there'll be people from the Daily Tar Heel, Blue and White, Heel Print, all these other organizations, Reese Feltz, that you can start gaining experience that will help you get internships. So what I do is help you do everything from um, crafting your resume, cover letters, talking about how to get an internship, uh, talking about how to network with alumni. So the first takeaway, internships and real world experience cannot be replaced. Secondly, there is a new uh, redone website for my area. So if you go to the J Schools website and uh, look under current students and click on career services, there are several things you'll notice there. Um, first and foremost, uh, there is a little uh, calendar icon. You click on that, you can schedule appointments with me that way. I do appointments generally Monday through Friday. Um, I set aside certain hours during those times, um, but you can click on there. It will tell you what times are available. There's also information about um, what walk-in hours I do uh, during the week as well for quick questions that may not take 30 minutes or more for an appointment. So the, the, the appointment icon is there. Secondly, we are partnering with University Career Services in Haynes Hall to help post internship and job listings. So I want you to uh, be familiar with um, their career aligner section. You need to register with them, upload your resume, but that's going to be the way we're going to push uh, internship and entry-level job openings to you. So there's information there on the website about how to access career aligner. Thirdly, on the website, there's information about some up Coming workshops we're doing the first September 14th uh, and then there's one following the week following on the 21st to go over how to use career lineup and also a resume critique with that so second takeaway, go to my website, get familiar with Career Alina, know, know that's the easiest way to make an appointment with me. Third and finally is I would love for you to follow me on my Twitter feed, which is simply UNCJ Careers. Uh, there are about 630 people following me now. I'd like to get that closer to 1,000 by uh, the end of September. What I do on my Twitter feed is highlight jobs and internships that may be on Career Alina or others have sent to me uh, helpful career advice, uh, helpful advice about the different uh, industries you may be interested in. So the three things, again, internships and real world experience, go to my website, know how to make appointments and career lineup, and follow me on UNCJ Careers. Thank you. Bugno. I'm the special events and programs manager for the school and I have two things to talk to you about today. Um, the first thing is on October 14th we're having an open house for um, as part of UNC's family weekend so we encourage all you guys to bring your families. You don't have to be a current J school student if you're an underclassman and want to show off to your parents uh, what you're thinking about majoring in come by. Our faculty and staff will be on hand. We'll have a little reception uh, in the Hall of Fame room and you can kind of explore with your families and uh, show them what the J School is all about. The second thing that I'm going to talk to you about is our uh, fall and spring break networking trips. These are a signature of the school. They're sponsored by our Journalism Alumni and Friends Association. Um, and I have a little video that we made from the trip we went on this past spring that kind of explains everything and tells you why you should try to do it. with people that went to your school and are not successful. 
I couldn't believe that I was sitting in the buildings and the offices that are so famous. Magazines I've been reading since I was a kid, like Sports Illustrated and ESPN the magazine. It was just a great experience to be able to, to go to places like that and you see fellow uh, Tar Heels up there in uh, the big city. We live in a digital world. Everybody's always on email and Twitter and Facebook, but I think there's nothing that's more powerful than face-to-face -face communication. This is really a moment in time for us to be able to communicate and, and really learn about them. You know, it helps when they're asking questions and I can kind of know a little bit more about you know, what's of value to them when it comes to their careers. And you really get a feel for what the students are into these days. What are they being taught? What are their interests? How can I help them? How can they help me to grow? And, and also just to stay connected with UNC. She had a lot of uh, advice for me, a lot of suggestions of things that I could do now on cover letters, on resumes, on the culture of his agency and all the agencies that he's worked at before. He was completely willing to get me in touch with anyone he knew in any ad agencies in New York. Tough loss, you know, alumni, contribute, do our part to give back and carry this work for future students, um, future alumni. To build up the Carolina network, I think is something very important, and I think the alumni here in New York take that very seriously. It was really amazing to see that everybody was so willing to help out and come up and talk to you, you know, give you their cards, say contact me anytime. It was just really encouraging to see that, you know, people hadn't forgotten their roots, and I found that everyone wants to help you. The alumni, you know, they see a hardworking Carolina kid, someone who's passionate, someone who has goals and driven, and they want to help, regardless of what your niche is. At this point, I have the advice that I need and the contacts that I need to find people within ad agencies um, that can recommend me or at least talk to me um, so I can start applying for jobs and really be connected to the right people to go up and start interviewing. You have to get out there, you have to meet the alumni, and you have to get them in your corner and working for you, and, and you'll be much better off. It's in incomparable to anything else I could have done with my spring break. I mean, I could have. You know, taking a cruise, going with friends somewhere, going with family on a trip, um, even going there by myself, but you can't really get this type of alumni student connection on your own. You know, if you want a job, I would say go on this trip. I mean, if you want to live in New York or if you want to live wherever the trip may go uh, in the spring or the fall, um, it, it's, it's a good idea. It was exhausting. I came back on Saturday and passed out, but it was, it was what it's supposed to be. It was what. So uh, that gives you a little brief overview. Um, just to note, three out of the four kids in that video um, that went on the spring trip have landed jobs in New York City and are currently working. So it works. Our alumni really want to help. Um, and so we encourage you, even if you don't go on a trip, come talk to me and we'll hook you up with alumni and help you get internships and jobs. Um, the trip this fall, we're going to Chicago during fall break. It's uh, October 20th to the 22nd. The information, frequently asked questions, everything you need to know is on the website, which is jomc.unc.edu slash networking trips. Um, the application is also on that website, and you submit it right there online. It's due September 16th. Um, if you have any questions about anything, come see me or come up to my office. It's uh, 316 up on the third floor, and I hope you guys all apply. Thanks. Hello, um, my name is M M Michael and I am the assi uh, uh, assistant di 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 director for international and professional pro programs here at the school. And I have uh, four things I want to tell you about. Um, firstly, uh, our study abroad pro pro programs that the school has. Um, the J School has five uh, study abroad programs specifically for J, J School stu stu students. They are in uh, Argentina, in Buenos Aires, in Pamplona, Spain, in uh, London, in Paris, and also new for fall of 2012 um, at the University of Queensland in Brisbane. 
and uh, all these exchanges exchanges are open for students in all um, areas of the school. Some are more suited to some areas. So um, if you do want to go on one of these J School exchanges, please come and talk to me. Um, oh yeah, I, I'm in room one. 61, which is just over there next to uh, the students' services. Um, secondly, is that uh, we also have four annual awards that we um, hand out for international things that our students are up to. Um, they are up. They are worth up to two and a half. Uh, thousand each and this is for students who do something international for credit or for their own um, travel and interests or research or something like like that so in the next year if you're planning to do anything international come and speak to me um, third thirdly um, Richard Cole, the ex-dean of, uh, of the school, asked me to mention a couple of things. Number one is in the spring, he's doing a class called Mass Communication in Mexico. And this is a class all about the, like, the culture of mass communication in Mexico, and, in, and it includes a spring break trip there. Um, Eight or nine d d d d d days down down there, visiting Mo 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 Monterey Tech University with media vi 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 visits, and it's a lot of fun. So that is one course uh, to do in the spring, and also um, we have an internship pro pro program with China.org.cn, which is a English language news organization in China. And every su su summer, um, the J School sends two stu students there as interns, and you spend eight or nine weeks there um, uh, writing sto stories and editing sto sto stories. Um, you do not have to speak Chinese at, at all. It's an English language news organization, so um, no language ba 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 barriers there. And um, you pay for your flights there, and then all your expenses while you, you are there are paid for. So if you want any more inf information about the uh, class uh, to do with Mexico or the internship program, speak to Richard Cole. He's sitting just over there with his hand up now. Oh, yeah. So um, speak to him about those two, and then study abroad or the international awards. Speak to me in room 161, and also, most importantly, which I forgot, on September the 15th, I am hosting a study abroad interest um, meeting. That's September the 15th uh, at 4 o'clock in the Halls of Fame room, which is just over there. So hope to see you all there. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anna Mullen, the president of the Heel Raisers Council. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about our student group. The Heel Raisers Council is an officially recognized student organization on campus committed to educating undergraduates about the importance of private giving. And we're sponsored by the UNC Office of Development, which means we have a lot of great resources we get to take advantage of. Um, currently, we have 20 members on the council and we are recruiting. Um, so if you're interested, come see us at our table over there right after this. Um, we also have opportunities for you to become ambassadors, and so that means you're kind of the liaison between the student giving organization and then a school or department at Carolina. And last year, I was the ambassador to the UNC School of Journalism and Mass Communication, and it was a great opportunity because I got to make presentations kind of like this to different groups and classes and just kind of get the word out about student giving. 
Um, also, we meet twice a month, and we have about six big events every year that we host to um, get the word out about student giving on campus. Um, we also have a new program for students interested in careers and fundraising, and that involves an e-newsletter and a listserv, um, and we also have a lot of neat speakers lined up for that, so if you're interested, come see us after, and we can get you plugged into that. And um, if any of the faculty is involved in helping us with future events, and we have one coming up where faculty can kind of play a role and just say a couple lines before class about the importance of private giving, um, come see us too. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Anna. There are just so many ways and opportunities to get involved with extracurricular activities and student groups at the school and the university that will help you not only further your education, but give you practical work experience, provide personal development, and build a stronger network. I really recommend that you get involved with at least one of these student organizations or student publications. Many of them are setting up right now in the hallway behind us, either out through that door or that door there. Uh, so you can take a minute today after we finish here uh, to talk with them, just see what they have to offer, and uh, really start thinking about how you might want to get involved in one or more of these organizations. One way, and here comes an advertisement, Okay, one way you can get involved in a great project right away is to participate in the planning and execution of First Amendment Day on campus. It will be on September 27th this year. Dr. Kathy Packer on our faculty is organizing First Amendment Day, and Kathy, you're right there, and yeah. Catch up with her today, if at all possible. Great, there's a table uh, at, right out where the other student organizations are setting up, or visit firstamendmentday.unc.edu for some more information. Want to thank you all for coming today. We're really looking forward to working with you this year. Carolina is really fortunate to have very loyal and generous alumni. Much of what you experience here is made possible by private gifts. Please keep that in mind and show your appreciation when you meet alumni and friends of the school. I'd like also to plant the seed that you will soon be the next generation of alumni. It will happen before you know it. Tomorrow's students will rely on your generosity and support. We want you to remember the J School when you're out there working and make a difference in the profession. I encourage all of you to stay and visit during the reception in the Halls of Fame room, which is right out, uh, right out there and to your right. But first, I ask that you exit those, those doors that I pointed out behind me. I feel like the lady on the airplanes now, showing you where the exits are. Um, so you can get more information from the student organizations. And thanks once again for coming.